Greetings friends and welcome to a yoga class for standing poses or more specifically standing poses for beginners. If you are injured or pregnant, I'm going to recommend skipping over this class. I always recommend taking a class either live online with an instructor or even better live in person. And there are going to be a couple of props you're going to want for this practice. Some blocks are very ideal, especially if standing poses are new to you. We'll use these for a lot of the standing poses at the beginning of the practice. And you will either want a strap or a belt also works just as well in this case. And lastly, you will want either a yoga bolster or a couple of Mexican blankets like these work just as well. If you have a couple of these that you can fold up long ways, I will uh, talk you through that once we're using them. And with all of that out of the way, we can get started. Um, another thing I forgot to mention, in addition to your yoga mat, you will also want a little bit of empty wall space just to take a half forward fold at some point during the sequence. So now with all of that out of the way, we can get started. We're going to begin in Tadasana or mountain pose. Stand with the feet either together or hip distance. Press down the feet. Make sure that they're parallel. They're not pigeon toed or out wide. And then straighten the legs by pressing back the calves lifting the knees, pressing back the thighs, lift the waist off of the thighs, lift the chest, straighten the arms down along your sides, relax the shoulders down, reach through the fingertips, and have your hands just behind if you have side seams on your pants or shorts. This is Mountain Pose Tadasana. Try to keep the gaze forward. And then from here, we're going to extend the arms forward and up. Keep pressing down the feet and straightening the legs as you reach the arms up. If you feel your elbows bending, it's fine if you take your arms out wide, more like a Y position, or if you're prone to shoulder pains, this can also be really nice. I want to make sure we get those arms straight, lengthening the spine, lengthening the sides of the body. Turn the palms to face outwards and on an exhalation, slowly lower the arms. We're going to do that two more times. Reach the arms forward and up. Press down the feet, straighten the legs as you reach up through the arms. Turn the palms to face out on an exhalation. Slowly lower the arms. One last time. Reach the arms forward and up. Turn the palms to face out. Lower the arms on an exhalation. Take a quick little look at my notes here. And the next pose that we're going to take is tree pose, Vrikshasana. If you are not familiar with this pose, it looks like this. A very popular yoga pose, uh, one that's often pictured. So maybe it looks familiar to you. And if balance is an issue, you can start with your left side of the body up near a wall, and you can keep that left hand on the wall for balance. Otherwise, if balance is not an issue for you, you can take tree pose in the center of the room. Begin in mountain pose, Tadasana. Make sure you have a strong Tadasana, legs straight, feet pressing down. And then strongly press down the left foot as you lift the right foot off of the floor. 
and then bring the right foot to either the inner left calf or inner left thigh. You can hold the ankle or shin to keep the foot at the thigh. Just don't let the foot rest at the inner knee. And as I mentioned, um, if balance is an issue for you, you can have your left hand at the wall during this. And if you're working in the middle of the room, you can take your hands into a prayer position, press that standing leg into the right foot as much as the foot's pressing into the leg. And then if this is going well, reach the arms forward and up. Classical variation, Vrikshasana tree pose. Then we'll turn the palms to face out on an exhale, slowly lower the arms down to the hips, can lower the foot to the floor. Come back to mountain pose, pressing down both feet, straightening the legs, lift the chest. And then if you're using the wall, now you'll want to stand with the right side of the, your body up near the wall. You can keep your right hand on the wall and then strongly press down at your right foot, straighten the right leg, that's gonna be your standing leg, and then lift the left foot off of the floor, bring the foot to either the inner right calf, inner right thigh. You can take a moment here, holding the ankle or shin, keeping the foot up at the thigh, if that's where you're going. And if you're Working with balance and you don't have the hand at the wall, you can bring the hands to a prayer position, lift the chest, keep straightening that standing leg, and then raise the arms forward and up. And then turn the palms to face out. On an exhale, slowly lower the arms to the hips, bring the foot to the floor, come back into mountain pose. In one moment here, I'm gonna let the kitty out. Here you go, baby. And the next pose we're going to take is extended triangle pose or Utita Trikonasana. So now if you have those blocks, you'll want to have them ready behind your mat, um, out wide so that hopefully they'll line up behind your feet or behind your calves. From mountain pose, bring your hands to the hips, bend the knees. Step the feet out wide to the hand over foot pose. Double check with your alignment. Extend the arms out to the side. Make sure that your feet are lined up underneath the hands. Make sure the feet are parallel, evenly placed, heels of the line at the back edge of the mat, and then straighten the legs, lift the chest, can bring the hands to the hips. Gently press the tailbone forward. Press down strongly your left foot, left heel as you turn your right leg out to face so that the toes face the short edge of the mat. And we'll extend the right arm out to the side. Take a deep inhale as you exhale. Reach over the left leg, but keep the chest facing forward and keep extending over your left leg until you can reach the hand to either the block, or if you're not using blocks, you can grab hold of your ankle and pull up. Press down, especially the outer edge or heel of the left foot and the inner arch of the right foot. Straighten the legs. The block has three heights, remember, if you are using a block. And if all of this is going well, we can reach up towards the ceiling with the left arm, extending the arms in opposite directions. This is the classical variation of Utita Trikonasana, extended triangle pose. And then press down the feet, 
to come out, press off your support, reach up through the top arm to swing up, we'll bring the hands to the hips, turn the right foot to face forward, and double check with your alignment, make sure the feet are still even, parallel, heels aligned at the back edge of the mat, and we'll go right to our opposite side. So press down the right foot, right heel as you turn the left leg out, toes face the short edge of the mat. Press down the feet, straighten the legs, gently press the tailbone forward and extend your left arm out to the side. Take a deep inhale as you exhale, extend over the left leg, keeping the legs straight, Extend over the left leg so you can either reach your block or grab hold of the ankle and pull up if that is where you're going. Remember to keep the chest facing forward, so turn the chest. You can turn the chest by pressing the right shoulder back, the left shoulder forward, and all of if all of this is going well, we'll extend the right arm up towards the ceiling. Uddita Trikonasana, extended triangle pose. To come out, press down the feet, reach up through the top arm to swing up with the hands on the hips, turn the feet to face forward, you can heel toe or step the feet back to mountain pose, Tadasana. And now we're going to take Uttita Parsvakanasana, extended side angle pose. You will likely still want your bricks, especially if you had them on the higher height during triangle pose. Um, I'm just going to turn around for this one. I feel like that can be helpful, especially once we get to the arm portion of the pose. So, Align the heels at the back edge of the mat, and we're going to come into this the same way we came into triangle pose. So with the hands on the hips, bend the knees, step the feet apart, out to the hand over foot pose. Take a moment here, just pressing down the feet, straightening the legs, making sure that the feet are aligned underneath the hands. And then press down that left foot, especially the outer edge and the heel of the left foot as you turn the right leg out, as you did for triangle pose. Now extend the right arm out to the right. On an exhalation, bend the right knee so that the knee is aligned over the heel. Don't let the knee collapse inwards, press it outwards, much like warrior two if you're familiar with that. And we'll extend the right arm out to the side. On an exhalation, extend over the right leg, hand to the block. Or if you're not using a block, hand to the floor. And press that right knee into the inner right arm. Turn the chest to face forward. Straighten the left leg as you bend the right knee. And then reach the arm left arm up towards the ceiling, turn the palm towards the face, and then behind you, and extend the arm up and over the side of the face. This is extended side angle pose, Uttita Parsvokanasana. And then reach up towards the ceiling with the left arm to come out, press down the feet, reach through the top arm to swing up, with the hands on the hips, turn the feet to face forward. And if your feet are still properly aligned, we will go right into our left side. So, strongly press down the outer edge of the right foot, the right heel, as you turn the left leg out, toes facing the short edge of the mat. Extend the left arm out to the side, and on an exhalation, bend the left knee. Knee aligned over the heel. Remember, try not to let the knee fall inwards. 
And then on your next exhalation, extend to the left, over the left leg, hand to the block. Remember the block has three heights, or if you're not using a block, hand to the floor. Press that knee into the arm as you straighten the right leg. Turn the chest to face forward, and then reach up towards the ceiling with the right arm. Turn the palm to face your face, and then turn the palm behind you. Reach the arm up over the side of your face, creating this side angle from the right heel through the right hand. And then strongly press down the feet, reach up towards the ceiling with the right arm, reach up and press off your support to swing up, hands on the hips, turn the feet, heel toe, step the feet back into mountain pose, Tadasana. <clears throat> to take a little sip of my beverage so that my voice doesn't go all raspy on you guys. <clears throat> and then next we're going to use that little bit of empty wall that I had mentioned for a half forward fold. This is a nice way of opening the legs and taking a mild rest in the middle of standing poses. So start with your hands near the wall, standing near the wall. Hands are a little bit lower than the shoulders, maybe somewhere between the elbows and shoulders or even at the elbow, elbow height. And then step the feet back, press the hands into the wall. Step the feet back so that the heels are aligned underneath the buttocks. And then press the hands into the wall, spread the fingers wide, straighten the arms, press down the feet, press back the calves, pull back through the hips as you extend forward through the arms, creating some length in the spine, length in the side ribs. Opening up the backs of the legs. This is Ardha Uttanasana at the wall. Half forward fold. To come out, bend the knees, look towards your hands, and then step towards the wall. You can come back to our mat if you stepped away from it. And we're going to take Pars Bhotanasana, intense side stretch. And again, I'm going to turn around so that we're both facing the same way. And we're going to want both of our blocks, if you're using them, on the right side of our mat, each at the long edge of the mat here. And instead of standing with the heels at the back edge of the mat, I'm going to have them in this, I'm going to have my feet at the center of the mat. And then we'll bring the hands to the hips, bend the knees, step the feet out wide so that the right leg lands in between those two blocks or right foot lands between those blocks. And now we're going to turn the left foot deeply in by pressing out the left heel. And then we'll turn the right leg, toes face the short edge of the mat, but now we're also going to turn the hips, turn the chest. Turn the shoulders all to face the same direction the toes are pointing. Press down the outer edge of the left foot and the inner arch of the right foot. Straighten the legs, lift the chest up towards the ceiling like you're going to take a slight back bend. Take a deep inhalation and as you exhale, lead with the chest to come forward and forward and keep bringing the chest forward until you're down low enough to bring your hands either onto the blocks, remembering that there's three heights, or if you're not using blocks, hands to the floor. As ideally, your hands would be aligned right underneath your shoulders, 
and then keep pressing down the feet, keep straightening the legs. Don't let that right hip jet out to the right side. Press that right buttocks in towards the left side, squeezing the inner legs towards each other. Try not to let the back round, keep the gaze forward. This is Parsvottanasana, intense side stretch. To come out, you can press down the feet and either swing up with your hands on the hips or press off your support to come up. And we'll turn the feet to face forward and then heel toe or step the feet together. There's two ways you could get into doing your other side. One is you could simply just turn around or you can bring your blocks over to the left side of your mat. Remember both on at the long edges of the mat on your left side and we'll start by standing in the center of the mat. Bring the hands to the hips, bend the knees, step the feet out wide, left foot or calf aligned between those blocks. And now we're going to turn the right foot deeply in by pressing out the right heel. Then turn the left leg, turn the left foot to face the short edge of the mat. And we'll turn our hips, our abdomen, chest, shoulders, all to face that left short edge of the mat. Now press down the feet, straighten the legs. Lift the chest towards the ceiling, start to take a back bend. Take a deep inhale and on an exhale, lead with the chest to come forward, forward, forward with the chest until you're down low enough to reach either the blocks or if you're not using any blocks, reach the floor. Remember to keep pressing down the feet and straightening the legs. Don't let that left buttocks jet out to the left side. Squeeze that inner thigh towards the right thigh. And keep the back from rounding by keeping the gaze forward. Parsvo Tanasana, intense side stretch. To come up, you can either press off your support or swing up with the hands on the hips. Turn the feet to face forward, and then we'll heel toe or step the feet back together. And I'm gonna take another sip of my drink here. We got one more standing pose. That's the wide-legged forward bend. If you're using blocks, you'll have them at the front edge of your mat with the heels aligned at the back edge of the mat. Come into mountain pose, Tadasana. And then bring the hands to the hips, bend the knees, step the feet out wide to the hand over foot pose one last time. Extend the arms, make sure you have a nice wide stride for this one. And then we'll bring the hands to the hips, press down the feet, straighten the legs, press back the thighs. And throughout this pose, try to keep your buttocks in line with your heels, like they're making the three points of a triangle. We don't want the buttocks to come ahead or behind the heels. Keep the legs straight, lift the chest, take a deep inhale, and as you exhale, lead with the chest to come forward and forward. Remember, keep the buttocks in line with the heels as you lead with the chest, and once you're down low enough, bring the hands either to the blocks or to the floor, hands ideally underneath your shoulders. And then keep the gaze forward. We don't want the back to round in this phase of the pose. There's two phases of wide-legged forward bend. One is with the back straight, that's this one. One is with the back rounded. So we're gonna keep the back straight 
for this pose in this practice, but keep opening up the backs of the legs by pressing back the calves, pressing back the thighs, lift the chest, Prasarita Parottanasana, wide-legged forward bend. Press down the feet, and to come out, you can either press off of your support or swing up with the hands on the hips, heel, toe, or step your feet back to mountain pose. Take one more mountain pose, just to help soothe the low back after all those standing poses. Feet together or hip distance, straighten the legs, lift the waist, lift the chest, straighten the arms down. And roll your shoulders up and back and down, forward, up, back, rolling the shoulders in backward circles. Take a quick peek at my notes. And now is the part of the practice where you may want to use either your bolster or two folded blankets long ways. I mentioned I would show how to do that if you're using a Mexican blanket. Start by hold, folding it long edge to long edge or as I learned in school, hot dog style. And then from short edge to short edge. This is the art of yoga blankets folding 101. And then uh, short edge to short edge again. And then fold it that way one more time. Uh, this nice long fold. You can stack them on top of each other. And if you don't have a bolster or blankets, but you have yoga bricks, you can also use a yoga brick. So we're going to come into Virasana hero pose. If you were using a brick, it would look like this. We come down to a kneeling position in front of our support with the feet out wide so that our heels can sit back. And if you're really flexible, like my niece can do this, she can sit all the way towards the floor without this gap here. So me, I need some kind of support. If you have a brick, you can squeeze it in there. You can sit on the brick. Um, you don't want to be sitting on your heels. Also, your knees should be either together or hip distance, not wider than hip distance. And of course, if you're using a blanket or bolsters, that would look like so. I'm going to show this or the next few poses that we go through, I'm going to show from the side. I think that'll work better. I'm going to use my blankets for support here. And as I mentioned, the knees are either together or hip distance as we're sitting back either on the floor or on our support. And this is Virasana hero pose. From here, interlace the fingers, wiggle the fingers tight into the webbing, we're going to take Parvatasana, mountain top pose. On an exhalation, press the palms away from you, straighten the arms. Take a few breaths here, just getting the elbows nice and straight, pressing the fingers onto the backs of the hands, opening up the hands. And then on an inhalation, slowly start to raise the arms up towards the ceiling. But try not to let the elbows bend. Try not to let the back overly arch. Keep pressing down into your support as you reach up, not just through the arms, but from the ribs that you're also opening up the armpits. And on an exhalation, slowly lower the arms. Walk your fingers over ones that the opposite pinkies on bottom will take the opposite clasp. And then same thing on an exhalation, press the palms away from you, straighten the arms and take a few moments here 
making sure the elbows are straight, opening up the palms, opening up the hands by pressing the fingers onto the backs of the hands. And then on your next inhalation, slowly start to raise the arms up towards the ceiling. Make sure your knees aren't splaying wide. Reach up through the ribs, through the arms. Deep breaths here in Parvatasana in Virasana. That's mountaintop pose in hero pose. Press the fingers onto the backs of the hands. Reach up towards the ceiling. One more deep breath and on an exhalation, slowly lower the arms. Now we're going to take a couple of twists. Um, if you're using a block, it can be nice to have a second block behind you for your hand in the twist. Otherwise, if you're using the long blankets or a bolster, you can just use uh, the blankets or bolster to press your hand into. And first we'll twist to our left. So from Virasana Hero Pose, extend the arms forward and up. Reach the arms up, and on an exhalation, twist from your upper back, twist to the left. And once you've twisted as far as you can go, bring the hands down, right hand to the left thigh or knee, left hand onto the support behind you. Lengthen the spine on an inhalation. Twist a little further on an exhalation. You can do that by pressing the left shoulder blade towards the spine. But try to keep twisting from the upper back in these twists. This is Parsva Virasana. Also, I should mention, try not to lean behind or ahead of the hips. We want the shoulders stacked on top of the hips. So that we're revolving in place like a spiral staircase. And on an exhalation on twist, come back to facing forwards. Next, we're gonna twist to our right. So on an inhalation, raise the arms forward and up. Reach up. On your next exhalation, twist to the right. Twist from your upper back. And once you have twisted as far as you can go, bring the hands down. Left hand to the right thigh or knee, right hand on your support behind you. Lengthening on an inhale, twisting on an exhale by pressing the right shoulder blade towards the spine. And on your next exhalation, unravel, come back to center. Now we're going to bring the hands to the floor and we're going to walk the hands forward. Keep walking the hands forward until the arms are straight and then see if you can rest your forehead on the mat. If it's too much of a reach, you may need some kind of support, like a block or a little pillow or blanket, so that the head is resting on the support in front of you or on the floor. But keep extending those arms, spread the fingers wide. Try to keep the buttocks in contact with your support. Rest here. In Auto Mukha Virasana, downward facing hero pose. Now you should be able to leave the props where they are, keep your hands and feet where they are, but curl the toes under, and we're gonna come up into downward facing dogs. So press down the hands, 
Lift the hips up towards the ceiling, straighten the legs, straighten the arms. Spread the fingers wide, press down the underneaths of the knuckles. Straighten those arms. Make sure that you have the hands ahead of the shoulders for downward facing dog, Adho Svanasana. And just for a moment, bend the knees, lift the hips up towards the ceiling. On an exhalation, straighten the legs by pressing back the calves, pressing back the thighs, opening up the backs of the legs, opening up the armpits. Keep reaching the hips up towards the ceiling. And then you can look up towards your hands can come out by either walking towards your hands or if it's easier, you can just come down to a kneeling position to come out. And we made it to the home stretch of this sequence. So we're going to take bridge pose.
to move your fingers and toes. Bend the knees, place the feet on the floor. Then hug the knees towards the chest. Raise one of your arms overhead and roll off to that side to use that arm as a pillow. Use the opposite arm to bring yourself slowly up and out. And that is going to conclude our practice for standing poses. If you made it through that sequence, great work. Thank you for joining me and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Namaste.